Welcome to another episode of Industrial Amputation, where you can always expect the unexpected. We have with us today a truly remarkable artist. His band, The Awakening, which began in the 90s, contains elements of dark wave, post-punk, new wave, and electronic bliss. His music should be absolutely on the radar of anyone that are fans of Bowie, The Cure, Bauhaus, and Joy Division, just to name a mere few. Yeah. His solo work is also equally impressive, and we are very happy to have with us today Mr. Ashton Knight. Ashton, thank you so much for being with us. Welcome, thank Ashton. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that fabulous introduction. I, I think I'd like to listen to me now that you've introduced me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> well, uh, starting off, can you talk to us about the music scene you came from in Johannesburg, South Africa? Yeah. I mean, I've uh, I've been living in the States now for 15, 17 years, but, you know, back in my wild youth. Um, yeah, it was, I started the band in Johannesburg, South Africa, and um, it was a, an unlikely success story, I guess, because you don't, I guess when you think of South Africa, the first thing you think of is probably not Gothic rock, probably not, you know, vampires mm -hmm. swinging from mm -hmm. trees and all that. And uh, we were as surprised, so I was as surprised as anybody else that people responded so well to the very first album we sort of we did a a uh, strange dark cover version of the sound of silence back in 1997 and uh i guess they liked it and uh, and we kept <laughs> i kept making yeah i kept making more records and um i think there was not a massive gothic scene to speak of i think it was a a um we sort of fit each other you know the the, the more the scene grew the more hope music we made and and so mm -hmm. continued and uh and of course other bands started springing up and so on and um by the time we left i think the old not not that we single-handedly started all of it i think but, you know we helped and yeah. uh by the time we left yeah i had the opportunity to pretty much headline all the big festivals and you know do all tour the band to death and and back again and um it's still a thriving rock scene and thriving music scene and a uh, live scene to this day, you know. I think, uh, incredible, man. Yeah. It's really good. You've been referred to as Johannesburg's David Bowie. So the reception to your music over there must have been overwhelmingly positive to be given such a prestigious title. And we're all massive David Bowie fans. Um, you have to know what's your favorite album of his and why? Well, firstly, that. The, the publication that gave me that title was actually Cosmopolitan magazine. So I think that's extra. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's worth mentioning, you know, cause it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very hefty title to be given and uh, I don't yeah. take it lightly, nor do I believe it. But um, yeah, my favorite Bowie album, it, it, it alternates between obviously Ziggy Stardust is an absolute classic and it contains rock and roll suicide, which is my favorite Bowie song of all time, my favorite song of all time. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, I, I switched between that and Scary Monsters, you know, which is the the avant-garde David of yeah. the of 1980, you know, and that's I yeah yeah it's just the, the songwriting and the the sort of bravery on that record and the genre-defying nature of it is yeah. constant inspiration for me. Yeah, the screaming on the uh, up, which is a square scream like a baby. Is, oh uh, yeah, yeah. The it's, opening uh, and the closing tracks on that album are just—they make oh, the hair yeah. on the back of my neck stand up every single time I play it, and, uh, oh, yeah. and I frequently because he is the—he uh, is the bulk of my vinyl collection. I've got the, <laughs> same here. Yeah, I, I've lost the vinyl collection and had to replace it all too, and uh, uh, so yeah. I'm anxiously awaiting the last era box set. <laughs> Yeah, those, those box sets have helped us all to. Um, yes. in... <laughs> yeah, it made yeah. it a little bit easier, but while well, a little bit harder because I, I missed the first one, the five years box set, and uh, yeah. ended up having to drop like seven hundred dollars to finally get that one because I'm like, it's got that one yeah. Ziggy Stardust in it that's not available anywhere else. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah, my I wife had it on CD already, but but I yeah. had to get the one too. Yeah. yeah. My wife got me that the five years long after it was I had the same problem. I missed it, you know, late to the, late to the game and she yeah. surprised me one joyous Christmas. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I too have the, the whole 
Yeah. The whole series, yeah. It's a it's a sickness. <laughs> it's a problem, and I, I I go to a support group, but I've not been. <laughs> Yeah, you know. I may need I may need a number so I can join. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a candle lit in your honor, sir. Uh, <laughs> and I was trying to my light mine, but uh oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but that one's a little too low to light anymore. Yeah. And you say low, was that another Bowie reference? Just oh. in a... <laughs> yeah, you snuck it in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Low. That was an incredible mm -hmm. one. My I don't know. I think this is going to be odd for a lot of people, but I think Lodger is probably the one I go back to the most. Really? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a good right I mean, it's, it it's really good. is. Yeah. 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 I've got the, uh, the Lodger um, brass keychain from the, yeah. when that, the swag, when that album was released somewhere. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, a David Bowie dog tag, the diamond dog tag. I've got some of those. I've actually yeah. got his little head and neck from, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the man, not the man who fell to earth, uh, the hunger, the oh, life yeah. of him. So I'm like, oh, wow. It was smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it sounds like you've got a, a young museum in the making there. In your I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite boy is uh, Diamond Dogs. Oh, yeah. And uh, an album, man. And, uh, and uh, Young Americans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just the whole, yeah. just the whole, um, just this whole uh, embodiment of coming to Philadelphia mm -hmm. right. and just get right in deep into it. Because yeah. I have to live in Philadelphia. And when you get to know the certain underbelly of it, mm -hmm. it really it, it, it it's really a heavy set, it, a heavy scene. Right. This, you know, John the, Lennon and uh um Luther Bandros are both on that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh yeah, and you know the the the, the selection of art of uh, performers, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and it's just it's the whole flavor of it, you know. Right. Yeah. To me, you know, when she once you realize, you know that 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 uh, that all that was going on. Once you get you knows one knows that all that's going on, you very very rarely kind of figure out, you know who. Um, who, you know, he's doing the uh, young Duke, you know. Yeah, right. He's just, no, he's really in there. He's not just clicking. Oh, yeah. And and that, that put, put in a, a sense of, you know, you know, straight up serious guy and kind of guy attitude. Right. You know, right. no matter what he did in the past. But, you know, th those two David boys are my That's, ones I identify yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are all uh, all seventies Bowie, you know. All of these albums, it's uh, definitely yeah. when he was firing on all cylinders, you know. I mean, he he, he had a mm -hmm. a long, very enrich enriching and enriched career. But I think yes, yeah. the seventies is that's just I mean, mm -hmm. didn't, put, didn't put a foot wrong, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. At what point in your career did you decide to move to uh, the states, and what was the motivation behind it? It was pretty simple. I didn't decide. It was decided for me when I met my wife here. Oh, yes, I kind of figured that. I thought yeah. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's the classic story of. Uh, I think it was our second, the awakening second tour of the U.S. And um, mm -hmm. I met my wife at a at a concert. It was Love at First Sight, and uh, we. I sent the band home at the end of the tour and I stayed on and uh, went back to South Africa a little later and sold yeah. up everything and uh, came back wow. and we've been married now for, yeah, 15 years. So. <laughs> Fucking A. Awesome. Yeah. 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 She's American? Yeah, she's American. Yeah. And, and so am I now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. It took a little while, but eventually they <laughs> allowed me to, to get the passport, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your uh, latest album, Awakening, released in October, is amazing. It feels massive, masterfully articulated, like a fever dream, uh, that touches on so many different genres of music that truly captivates all three of us. Your quote is quoted as stating, the last two Awakening albums were departures for me. The al this alchemy explored the more electronic side of my musical personality, and the passage remains effectively cleared out the vaults of unreleased heavier material that feels like coming home. 
Can you expand on Coming Home and how it wove itself into writing your latest album? Absolutely. I think what happened is I quite literally fell in love again with the art and the artists and the albums that made me create music as The Awakening in the first place or back in the late 90s. And uh, and those are the classic goth rock bands and post-punk bands, you know, Bauhaus and Sisters and Joy Division and The Cure, all those, all those bands. And in the process, I fell in love with The Awakening again in that context. And it, it, it just was this very natural, organic kind of evolution. Uh, it was like coming full circle, but continuing, you know, it, 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 it's certainly not a bookend. It, it, it felt like a rebirth to mm. just allow myself to, to celebrate everything that had influenced me initially. And that's always been kind of burning in the background. And, um, and to also to wear my influences on my sleeve a little more uh, blatantly. I think I wanted to, it's not a case of emulating, it's a case of celebrating. Mm. You know, so, yeah, I, yeah. I just kind yeah. of wanted that to come through. You know, obviously, I've heard the Sisters of Mercy and Bass and bands like you know. I wasn't going to sort of pretend that that I've concocted all of this, and uh, not that I ever have. But I think on this album, and there's something about the number twelve and the twelfth album, and you know, it just felt like the right time to and to answer the next question. That's why it's it's just called the Awakening. You know, it, it's. Uh, it felt like coming home. It felt like a full circle and a new beginning simultaneously. And I just felt like I'd actually stick my face on it as well, which I hadn't done in, I think, ever. Yeah. I think I've been on the cover of an Awakening record. So, yeah, it, it's, um, I look rather gaunt on that album cover, like I, in need of some nourishment, maybe a bit of love and attention. But other than that, <laughs> it's a cool yeah. picture. I think I think it's it's a tour now in Europe, and I was telling people that, you know, it's the album with the meerkat on the front. I mean, I love it. It's my meerkat. <laughs> oh, well, it does. If it, it, it does feel like coming home. Um, listening to it, it, it's it's very nostalgic, mm -hmm. and and it's beautiful. Uh, it it does. It, it it takes me back, and uh, and I'm I'm really digging on that. So thank you, thank you. Any favorite songs for you for you guys? I'm liking, uh, the uh the second one mirror um mirror midnight mirror midnight i love mirror it midnight. it's freaking mm -hmm. amazing um and the uh what is it uh the third one from the last um crap i'm gonna have to brighten yeah. my screen so i can look at it yeah mm -hmm. i yeah i should know i, <laughs> I think yeah, was, not uh, here not here oh right the, the the very minimalist acoustic one yeah yes yeah. it's freaking beautiful it thank really you. is yeah thank you what i've enjoyed about this is how everyone seems to have different favorites with this record which is also interesting i mean yes mirror midnight is the first single and i feel like it is the flagship song for the album and it's got the video and the rest um but i've been interested to see different radio shows and playlists and podcasts are often highlighting Almost, almost every song on the record, someone has highlighted yeah. that as, as their song, you know, and that's, uh, as you've just done with Not Here, you know, that's not a, an obvious yeah. choice, I guess, um, whatever that means. And um, I feel like that's a testament to, to a solid record, you know, when you can't quite decide, you know, spoiled for choice, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I have a hard time picking favorites anyway. There's just too much out there for me to feel right. like that. Is it justice? So I, I I typically tell people when they ask me what my favorite song is, and I'll say, well, it, the, the one I'm listening to right now. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and and the next time you ask me, it'll be the one I'm listening to right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that one that one did stand out for me, and I, yeah, I very much enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's a solid album the whole way through. So Thank good Thank good on that, man. Thank you, Levi. I believe you had a question you wanted to ask about that yeah well you know how are you uh are you going to come to are you going to tour anything or play out so oh yeah yeah we were actually as i said i just i just finished a, a solo acoustic tour of uh -huh. europe and uh, the uk i literally just got back last week so that was yeah. great 
Um, but we are definitely touring as the full band next year. We've we've actually started securing some dates both in the US and and in Europe. Yeah. So yeah, it will be the first time in a long time. The last the last tour the Awakening did was way back in 2016. We toured with the Mission all over you. Oh. And uh, then and since then, it's been I've been kind of been more focused on the solo work and collaborations, yeah. writing books and scoring films and sure, yeah, yeah. things you know. Yeah. But uh, I feel I think I couldn't not tour with the, how well this has been yeah. received. So far, I mean, it's it's this video is approaching five hundred thousand views, which for a, an independent little band like like me is mm -hmm. pretty significant, especially in such a short period of time. And and uh, we've just had such great response. I just yeah. posted on Facebook and Instagram that we're going to tour again, and it's I mean, it's like thousands of likes and comments and things. This is this it's is very incredible. very encouraging for a band that's been around as long as as we have, you know. So yeah. It's, that's yeah. awesome. You're gonna bring your act to Seattle? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll have to show you around when you get here. Oh yeah, that's a date. Yeah, I haven't been to the last. I, I I think I was in Seattle with another project. I was in. I think we were there in 2018. Or, yeah, I think it's 2018. It's the last time I was in Seattle. So never played there as the Awakening. So that should be cool. Oh, well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm forward to that on. So um, the music video for Mirror Midnight is visually stunning and it's perfectly complements your music. Shooting it yeah. in black and white makes it resonate with the viewer even more so. How hands-on were you with creating this video? Oh, it's it's that's my baby. It's uh, I like to, to, to shoot the videos and edit the videos. And that's all you do. Yeah, it, it's, uh, there's some found footage in there, the, the sort of stuff of the police beating people up and all that. Um, but the, everything you see that has me in it <laughs> or, yeah. or yeah, it's, that's, I shot it all and, and, um, edited it all. That's, I, I have a great love for film, especially black and white film, like people mm -hmm. like Ingmar Bergman or, um, yeah. being a, a big influence. I love how, how much he does with so little, you know, yeah. the, mm -hmm. um, both the, both that mo most of his work being black and white, but also just the settings, you know, using two or three actors out on some island somewhere and, you know, manages to keep you engaged. Yeah, for could make a light bulb interesting. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think I, I've, I've taken a lot of that to, to heart over the years and people like David Lynch and Jim Jarmusch, these are all. Oh yeah, definitely. Born heroes of mine, you know, so I think I draw inspiration from all of that. And uh, I think I dream of actually making, at least a short form at some point. So, um, if not a feature, so I've been kind of trying to improve my skills with my music videos too, as a testing mm. of telling stories, um, that way, you know, mm. so how have you evolved as an artist and do you feel you found your true artist voice in the Gothic, Gothic and dark wave, uh, genres? Well, you know, it was essentially my starting point was in the Gothic dark wave world. And um, it's a voice that comes very naturally to me. It's not both my physical voice and the, the, mm -hmm. the way I write and, and the, the theatricality and the, the whole aesthetic is very comforting to me and a comfortable place for me to work. I've, I've over the years, I've tried lots of different lots of other things as well you know with in a solo capacity i've i've written in a more stripped down acoustic sort of singer songwriter style and i've gone i've done a glam album i've done a gritty rock and roll album i've done a lou reed-esque album i've done a you know i've done a americana album it's uh He's i just love it. i love music you know and i love so much music and so many artists and it's just mm. that whilst i'm very comfortable creating as the awakening i i would never i think just kind of fo focus everything and, and, and you know put it all in one space i think it's i'm too excited by too many things to do that mm -hmm. yeah, um, I feel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i can feel you <laughs> Levi, you got some questions 
So it says in your bio, you've worked with members of The Cure, The Mission, Tricky, All About Eve, as well as Peter Murphy's band. Mm -hmm. By, um, a huge, huge Tricky fan. You got uh, uh, some stories well, about how you... No, I, that, that's, that's, I'm not sure, that's, that's the one person in that list that I've not worked with. I've worked with a member of his band, but not with Tricky. Oh, okay. so, yeah, the others, the others are accurate. I'm not actually sure where that <laughs> piece of information came from, but um, <laughs> I, I assume it's because I collaborated with Mark Gemini Thwaite, who was a okay, uh, often a collaborator of Tricky's. Yeah, another friend of the uh, of the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Mark yeah. was also in um, Peter Murphy's band. So that's the link there. And, Oh, okay. And of the Cure through Beauty and Chaos, a project that I collaborate with pretty frequently. And uh, we've had a good fortune of having members of the Cure remix songs that I've been singing on and and um, mm -hmm. members of the mission. I mean, it's it's quite surreal being a little guy from the bottom of Africa to be on all yeah. these records with all these... these yeah. uh, is genuinely famous people, you know. So it's it's been it's been a yeah, a wonderful journey. I'm very, very well, happy. Yeah. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> what's, what's that? I said I said that's that's great. I mean, do you miss you know being in, in South Africa sometimes? Sometimes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's like it's, you know, you can't walk well. down the street and with your girl or, or your wife and uh just like, like old neighborhoods, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's <clears throat> there's there's a lot of. I mean, there's so much history there for me. I mean, it's yeah. it's where, you know, not not only my career, but I mean, that's that's where I was raised, and it's where I went to school, and where yeah. I was educated. You know, so it's, there's a big part of of that in me. I haven't quite lost the accent either. You know, so there's. No. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, cool, yeah. from a land of such rich history, um, nature and biodiversity, do you have any moments from your childhood that really resonate? Oh, many. You know, I was I was fortunate to be raised by uh, loving parents. One of whom, my dad, was a massive music fan, and uh, I think it's where I got my music obsession from. Before I was able to sing, I was obsessed with. Um, you know, it started with Elvis, really. I think I, I, uh, I'm going to just go off on a tangent for a moment about Elvis, but I think seeing the, <clears throat> the a rerun of the 68 comeback special uh, where he's in the bl black leather suit and he comes on and you look at the trouble, and I thought, yes, yes, I am. Sign me up. <laughs> I want to be a rock star just like you. And uh, that was the age of five, and by the age of eight, I discovered yeah. Bowie and and he he showed me how mm. to be an artist, you know, and how to yeah. create your own work and and redefine yourself and evolve and yeah. all of that. And then of course, Elvis was also his hero. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and then of course, getting back to your original question, my dad is also in the travel industry, so we literally traveled a lot. And so I think childhood was, yeah, it was it was enriching. I I, I was never just. We, you know, we traveled a lot as well. You know, we I went to many different schools and all of that, which was less than ideal. <laughs> but yeah. in the process, you know, you it's a kind of a sink or swim. So I think I kind of figured out how to paddle along, basically, and uh, became pretty resilient, I suppose, and resourceful and motivated and all of that. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, experience is, is going to it's going to affect everything about you, including the, the work that you create. I mean, it was also a violent place to live and I had some awful experiences as did many people. And, um, that's inside, you know, there's the, and the struggles and the, the difficulties that the nation itself was, was faced with and has been faced with and still is, is still overcoming the ramifications of, yeah. I mean, all of these things affect your, your your very being you know and how you view the world and, and how you process things and hopefully for me it's um just makes me firstly very grateful for you know surviving at all and uh, mm -hmm. grateful for all the lessons yeah. 
and 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 then of course all the support I got as an artist was just amazing. Uh, in spite of growing up in in a a sort of hateful period of history, um, art mm. art saved me, you know, and I think and artists saved me and prevented me from, I guess, going down a a, a path that was being <clears throat> perpetuated by the government at the time and education. Yeah. And uh, that power of art, I think, has just that's you talk about something that resonates. That's that's what really resonated, you know, is that these people that were speaking out against apartheid and all and all these sorts of things and uh, yeah. all the social injustices. I mean, that that message got through to us, whether the powers that be were trying to prevent that or not. Art, art essentially won, you know, and and uh, it was a, a massive contributor to. Con to, to how I perceive things and um, mm -hmm. it's uh, I think it can always make a difference and I think it's such a blessing to to continue to do this I mean this yeah, is yeah. my 12th album as the awakening but it's essentially the 20th album I've released and I've got eight solo albums as well mm -hmm. um, and it's just amazing to, that I, I get to do this for a living you know and and yeah. hopefully affect people in a positive way you know and and uh, and, and 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 continue to learn. It's always a learning experience, and I love that about about yeah our our, our time on Earth, really. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. So, so so you have a you have a band. I mean, you have a band that, uh, that you take out with you. Oh yeah, with with <clears throat> the Awakening is very much a a live band. It's uh, if I perform solo, it tends to be just me and my acoustic guitar. But not yeah. necessarily. I've, I've performed solo with a band as well, just different set yeah. of music, you know. But yeah, when we play as The Awakening, it's generally a, a four piece rock band, sometimes a five piece rock band. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoy both. I enjoy the the big rock thing, doing nice and loud and, and dramatic. Yeah. And I also enjoy stripping it right down and being able to, yeah. you know, in a room like we're sitting now and just share stories. And yeah. That's beautiful. That's, that's amazing too, you know. So it's again, I just feel very fortunate that I've been able to do both and continue to do both. That's yeah. good, man. It's good. Yeah. To, it's good to see you, you know, doing this. Thank so you. Industrial amputation yeah. is very fond of acts that promote inclusion, mental health awareness, positivity, yeah. activism. Um, you fit nicely into this theme with your desire to uh, promote and host philanthropic or philanthropic. Uh, Events such as uh, your Rock Against Rape concert series and uh, a lecture series at U.S. universities focusing on tolerance and acceptance, um, mm -hmm. which will walk us through some of the history a little bit in more detail. Um, but what led you to being a champion for compassion and action? Well, a lot of that <clears throat> was what we were just talking about with being raised right. in South Africa. You know, I, um, a lot of the the context of that particular lecture was being raised in apartheid era South Africa and essentially realizing that if you go with the flow, you end up in the gutter, you know, mm -hmm. and um, oftentimes anyway, and uh, to test what is taught and to uh, not assume that you're right, not assume that you know best, all, all those sorts. They're very simple truths, but sometimes you just need to put a bunch of simple truths together to paint a picture yeah. that's a little clearer for or maybe someone who hasn't seen it that way or thought about it that way. And yeah, man, it's it's love and compassion is going to win and it has to be the way, you know, and it's, it's all of these things. Yeah, you asked what affected it. It's very much coming from that kind of background where I was being essentially conditioned to not be that, you know, and and seeing how, how art broke through and, and how good humans broke through and how there's always essentially hope and a light at the end of some kind of tunnel um and then with the uh, with the rock against rape concert series that's just i mean it affected it it, it, it affects and uh, has affected and continues to affect so many people and i think we were in a position where we could make a difference especially on a college campus sort of level mm -hmm. where it was kind of at an all-time high uh, st statistically at the time. Um, and, 
yeah, I just felt the need to really, <laughs> it seems ridiculous that you ha have to make a thing out of saying that, you know, this is really not a good idea, people, you know, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and then, and then here's the resources that are available to you and, and let's raise some money and let's uh, shine a light on, on the problem. And I think I certainly don't have all the answers, but I, we, we just try to help find solutions, you know, and mm -hmm. a safe space for people. I, I appreciate artists that have a, have a social conscience so and, and yeah that, that means a lot to me personally it means a lot to me so thank you uh, thank you i love that you release books ashton uh your second book titled autumn's children contains the lyrics of the album of the same name short stories poems and musings can you talk about the short story specifically that you wrote yeah thank you i don't get to talk about those too often um mm -hmm. well the first book happened you know i wrote i created the album waiting for a voice in 2020 mm -hmm. and you'll remember what happened in 2020 so um it started i'd finished the record and my father passed away um and we went my wife and i went back to south africa to help mom with everything and to get her over to the states and while that was happening COVID started to happen and i started shutting down borders and all of that so we got back just in time you know it was pretty wow. scary um and I was in the situation of, you know, do I move forward with an album and try and release an album in a, with a pandemic unfolding that none of us knew, you know, how things were going to play out? Um, or do I, do I wait for it to pass and whatever? So in that sort of introspective state, I started thinking about the writing aspect, you know, the, the lyrics and where they came from and this thing that happened with dad and this thing that was happening in the world and, and, for years, my wife had, had encouraged me to to put pen to paper, not just with song lyrics, you know. So yeah. I figured, I figured, well, these words look pretty good on a page. Let's let's write some more of them, you know. And one thing led mm -hmm. to another, and and I decided to do this companion to the album. Uh, so it started with just to kind of flesh out the ideas of the record, and and it just evolved very naturally the way things sometimes do when it's the right thing you know and um that's good before i knew it i was writing short stories that were i guess somehow influenced by all of those things that i just mentioned and and the creative <laughs> process and these musings about what i was you know going through what we were all going through and yeah. trying to make sense of that and poems and that's but at the time the first one was was a lot of little bits and pieces that I'd assembled over the years, you know, just poems and stories and things. And by the time we got to Autumn's Children in 2023, it was more of a sit down and, and write this as a book, you know? So mm. it, 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 and it wasn't, you know, talking about a pandemic or about all of that. So it, it, in, in many ways, I kind of prefer the Autumn's Children book. I feel like it's more of a kind of a standalone piece that isn't tied to history or, me necessarily as an artist and i found that the stories in the first book i wrote a story called i forget what it's called mirror of something and it features a character called ghost boy which i created and and I, people mentioned that it's got a sort of a, a neil gaiman feel to it and i was really surprised that that story happened because i tend to be despite my jubilant form here on camera i'm actually yeah. a really really serious person and, and a lot of what I write is pretty serious and pretty intense yeah, yeah. Um, so much so that when I play live I, I do almost stand-up comedy between the songs to try and keep people from you know <laughs> not wanting to kill themselves <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I think some of that crept into the writing there's just this humor that 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 just wants to come out all the time and, yeah. and somehow balance the book so to speak and um so I was surprised when Ghost Boy's story happened the way it did. And and all of this was just, I'd just sit on the couch or the laptop and you know, stuff would just come out, uh, much like songwriting is for me. And so with the second book, I think the stories seem to fit in that kind of magical realism sort of realm. I just, I enjoy that, you know, I enjoy the, the sort of the promise of the fantastical and the something be, beyond the veil and all of that. It, it's just... Um, so that's yeah, there's, there's nothing kind of contrived about it for me. To me, it's just uh, 
I don't know. I feel like it. 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 it it's all here for the for, for me to just take it and and, and stick it. In and do it. it. You know, and uh, I'm just a conduit for these ideas and thoughts. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question because uh, I don't think I'd really thought about what I what I write story wise until you asked me. So I'm, I'm trying to figure it out right now. <laughs> <laughs> what the story is about? Yeah. 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 What, so you have 12 albums with Awakening and eight solo releases, which is beyond impressive. For people unfamiliar with your work, what would you consider to be a great jumping off points for potential fans to listen to? I think, uh, I mean, every, every person always wants to plug their latest album, but I do think that for The Awakening, this is a great introduction to The Awakening, is the, the self-titled newest album. Um, I would recommend that. There's also... A uh, kind of a, a greatest hits of the early days called okay. Anthology 15, which is a good space to just get an overview of what the awakening is mm -hmm. all about. And with uh, Ashton Knight's Waiting for a Voice is probably the album I would recommend. It's um, yeah, it's just my most personal record, and it's it's most indicative of of what you'd see when you see me perform okay. solo. You know, I just uh, yeah. I tend yeah. to to go in the kind of um, like I get as a Leonard Cohen sort of Nick Cave sort of yeah. space yeah. that I occupy in in in, in that format, and um, mm -hmm. I might be singing songs that I've written as the Awakening as well, um, but I think the Waiting for a Voice presentation is the closest to what a solo show would be. So I'd go with those two. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. I've heard. So I, I like I like I'm gonna tell you I don't uh I listen to some and it's really uh really good man I mean uh thank you seriously I mean it's the first time I've heard view mm -hmm. and I'm astonished I'm I'm astonished it's really good thank you really thank good. you appreciate that. And, it is it's 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 inspiring to make you know like for me because I'm an artist who want to go and actually try to yeah. say something and write and write something. Oh, thank I you. Trying, yeah, yeah, I was trying to get an idea on some tracks, and uh, and um, just now that I'm learning how to do, edit myself. It's a whole new room. A friend of mine told me, I'm, I'm used to having someone do it for me. Right. You know, just really dream dragging, you know, through, you know, existence. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I listen, I watch, I, I watch uh, some of the videos and I see, see the intensity of, uh, I narrate what you're getting across. You know, it's like, you know, like Lou Reed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a good, that's a good genre to, those are good artists to just to be a part of, or under, you know, in the right. bracket, you know. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's, <clears throat> at the end of the day, for me, it's, it's about, the words in my voice, you know, and how I'm going to get yeah. across and how, how. So I'm always going to be drawn to artists that are essentially lyric driven and, um, and decent singers. You know, that's that's kind of yeah. always going to beat kind of anything else. Yeah. I'll be impressed by your guitar work and all the other stuff. But so, personally, yeah. you know, it's 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 the words in the voice. And sometimes yeah, it's, it's, big, it's, you know. yeah. It's, that's really going to be the the anchor for me. It's going. That's be really good because, yeah, you know, my influences. You know, now I know how to play an instrument. Yeah, I'm playing with other people and stuff like that. I really, you know, really, really. Uh, I used to wonder, wow, these guys are really great, and then how did they get this idea for this, this. What, what what I'm listening to, 
Mm. So now yeah. when I when I when I when I hear your songs, you know, I can I know what I know what I you know I know what I'm feeling. Wow. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm from Chicago. Mm -hmm. You're from South Africa. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Technology is a motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> That it, it is. is. <laughs> I'm I'm in Denver now. Mm -hmm. I'm from Chicago. I've never been to South Africa. Yeah. I need to be honest. Only as far as band or art musicians, mm -hmm. I know the, the drummer from NXS. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. <laughs> you know, I, I come. A, I was in uh, Chicago and. And some friend of mine says, hey, man, there's a guy I want you to come upstairs and me. And I go, and there's this limousine. I don't know what the fuck is this. <laughs> and it's fucking that, that drummer. Right. Yeah. And when he's drumming, he's serious. Oh, yeah. But he was out. He says, no, he was out just hanging. Yeah. And so this friend of mine took me to them, to him and his friend. And it was awesome. You know, that's about as much as, you know, I know, other than the political side of things, you know. Right. But keep up the good work, man. I'm gonna I'm I'm Charles Levi. Lovely to meet you, know? you Charles Levi. Yeah. That's <laughs> Joe and that's Joey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. Do you know uh are you familiar with King Sonny Ade? No. No, South no. African or an African no. yeah. artist in, uh and King uh, from from Africa. Okay. Yeah. No, world, no. world music. It's, uh, yeah, it's, back, it's back in the eighties. It's stuff yeah. I used to listen to. Um, yeah. right. It's another. It's it's another. Now. It's another group. From yeah. uh, it's a guy and a girl. The, hmm. the girl is little. Oh yeah. I forgot the name of them. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The oh, oh, oh. What, what, what did you say? The yeah. Amber. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> when, when I when I just moved to the states, that's what every everyone said. Oh, do you know the Antwerp? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, we, would say, we would say the Antwerp. That's how we'd pronounce it. But yeah, <laughs> it's uh, and I think it was happening as I was moving, so I actually wasn't familiar with them. But I I saw the videos and things, and yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely something. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I like uh, going to the U District in Seattle back in the 80s and uh, going out. I believe it was Thursday nights were reggae nights. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. nights and I got to uh, I got to meet and talk to uh, King Sonny Ade Dada um, uh, for a while. He was a fascinating, fascinating person to talk to. Oh, uh, cool. I uh, felt mm -hmm. like I'm, wow, I'm rubbing elbows with actual royalty and they're fucking cool as hell, too. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great when um, it works that way. <laughs> I consider myself an all media artist, and I'm picking up that you are very much like that yourself. Uh, you've got yeah. your got your spoon in a whole lot of different pots, um, as well as being a musician and author. Uh, you also act, apparently. Um, yeah, well, tiny little what, what may we what 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 may we find you in? Oh no, it was it was theater acting. Theater. I, I, yeah, so and a long time ago, but I'm. I'm uh, feeling the pull of all of that again. And I think uh, as I've been dabbling in film, but I'm from a music side and from a scoring side, yeah. but I have had some people ask if I would, you know, hop in front of the camera. So uh -huh. yeah, you might see me in something in the not too distant future. Yeah, well, that's, that's great I'll for see. the follow-up. <laughs> Given the opportunity, what is mm -hmm. one role you feel you would really like to sink your teeth into? One role? Oh, mm -hmm. you mean like a specific? To really test your chops. Something that that yeah. Anything. Oh, you, mean, oh, you speak. Oh, oh, one role. You don't mean in acting. You just mean a, any like something. No, one role. one role in acting. If you okay. had the opportunity to do one role in acting, what what would you really really like to do? Well, um, I think uh, yeah. But it'd have to be something in the in the 
kind of intense drama sort of world, I think it would be the most challenging. I think it would be tempting and easy to play, you know, villain in a, a horror yeah. thing or a vampire or something like something obvious. But uh, mm -hmm. I'd have fun doing that. I mean, it's, it's I haven't done yeah. it yet. But I think to, to, I mentioned Ingmar Bergman earlier on, I think That's to be I in a, yeah. yeah, yeah, to be in a Bergman star movie like Persona. I know those uh -huh. two. I know it was two women, but you know, I, I could, I'm sure I could make a pretty decent woman. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Something where that's really about the, the, the human condition, I think would be wonderful. And uh, I'd love to write some music to go with it, you know, and just yeah. score, score something and set the scene and do something that's very much about, yeah, the human condition. I think that would be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody out there's got any tools in yeah. the fire. Yeah. Give me a call. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll come star in your movie, but not that kind of movie, guys. You know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, bow, bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the uh, ones looking to start a life of creative defiance, what advice would you offer? Creative defiance? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, my advice is always do what you love and what you're passionate about. Uh, you know, if you if you try to fabricate something to suit some kind of market or perceived market, you know, not only is it going to be a little hollow on the inside, if it fails, you've just made some piece of crap that, that the world really doesn't need. Uh, if, you <laughs> fail, if you fail doing what you truly love, you will still at least have something you truly love to show yeah. for it. And, um, that's a wonderful sentiment. Yep, it's a pretty simple one, but I think that's that's kept me going, and that's why I have so many records mm -hmm. and I'm I making like things a lot. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my advice for the the defiant artists out there: be defiant. Yeah. You know. Yeah, okay, that's good. So your books, um, I believe we can find digital on all the streaming platforms but uh your your books are those those are direct yeah you can get those directly from you yeah yeah they're they're yeah, I, I haven't uh <clears throat> i'm old school with the books so far and that you can only get print versions of them um i think as i start moving into books that are more the next the next book project is going to be a standalone collection of short stories without you know all the the other bits and pieces that I've added to these. And I may then go the whole Kindle route and all of that. Um, and I'm audio. Sure. Oh, and audio books. Yeah. <laughs> People would be asking me to do that, to read, to read the book and sound all dark mm -hmm. and sexy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so and you can put some music in it. Do like Nick Cave does. Yeah. Yeah. You know, little, why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So maybe Wayne Hustle will help you out. Maybe he will. You know, I need <laughs> it's, it's, it's limited limited hours in the day for all the things I'm trying to do. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, do you have anything else you'd like to talk about or promote? <clears throat> uh, let's <laughs> think. No, not particularly. Oh, well, my son has an album. I, I can promote that. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, knock us out. Yeah, he, he my son, uh, his, al his album is called Outreach, and his name is Tristan Hemlock. And uh, it's his first album, and he wrote and performed all the music on it. And I just helped with the mix and the production, but it's it's mm -hmm. all, and that's on Excellent. Spotify. So you can go and check out Outreach. It's uh, oh okay, piano oriented, <laughs> uh, organic, electronic music. So it's um, mm -hmm. it's like avant garde piano mixed with um, oh, that's cool right down there. Like, sort of that's vibes. cool. Excellent. Yeah, wow. so I'll, I'll promote that and uh, make sure that he has more fans. Right on. <laughs> Tristan, I'm gonna Tristan check it out. Yeah. yeah, Tristan. Tristan yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Right on, Ashton. It's been a freaking pleasure to speak with you, man. Yeah, um, that, it's been like, a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. But, you Thank know, you so much for what you do. I mean, honestly, it, the the world needs more of that. It really does. Uh, Thanks. So lovely people, 
You can find the Awakening album out now, available on Spotify and other digital platforms. You can order directly from the artist in all formats at theawakening.com. Kiddos, that brings us to the end of another episode dedicated to our dear friend Jason Lupo with love and respect to his family. These last few weeks have been hard. People are hurting. People are scared. Please don't forget to be kind. Take some time away from the static and buzz of doom scrolling. Watch some cartoons. Go hug a friend. Hug a friend tight. Be good to each other and yourselves. Remember, love ripples outwards and back. Please begin the motion with small acts of mercy. Be mindful of the lowly insect or slug in your path. Help it off the pavement and back into the grass. Empathy is more important now than ever. Let's not lose our humanity. Love, hugs, and belly rubs. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>